we move on to react to Mikel Arteta. He has been extended as manager for Arsenal till 2027. It's a new three-year deal for him. Um, it, it was reported early on Thursday, actually, that um, that Arteta is going to receive a significant salary raise to uh, which is uh, which is you know right now his is nine million a year to um on his existing nine million uh euros a year euros or pounds i uh, can't read that side and then um but uh, yeah arteta's contract was actually due to expire this next summer uh, but uh but now with the extension happening um, well, Arteta in a statement saying, I feel extremely proud, very excited, and I'm looking forward to what is coming next. I'm proud to be where I am and have the relationship that I have with everyone at the club. I am extremely lucky to work every single day with good people and the ambition we have here. I feel very inspired. I feel challenged. I feel supported. And I want to do much more than what we've already done together. Together with the players and everyone at the club, we are looking forward to the coming years with our supporters. We have emotionally transformed the club and the team. Our supporters have transformed individuals and we are different now. You can tell that we are different and for me that is down to them. We look forward to continuing this journey together. Arsenal's co-chairman Josh Kroenke, he added that um, Mikel is a dynamic and passionate manager who is relentless in the pursuit of excellence. He has a deep understanding of Arsenal's values and says joining us as head coach in December 2019, he has taken the team to another level in an Arsenal way. Like Mikel, Martina, uh, Mikel Arteta has, you know, had a great recent years at uh, Arsenal. Being able to transform this team into an elite team in Europe that can compete for the Premier League um, over these past few seasons and the steady progression that these players have made, this young core has made with Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, uh, Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, the progression that he's made with this core of players. And then he's been able, young core, and then he's been able to vet, um, to, uh, you know, fit in the players like Gabriel Jesus, Declan Rice, uh, Kai Havertz, um, Jorginho, you know, William Saliba. Oh, William Saliba is also one of the young players that came up with Mikel Marteta, Arteta, even though he did spend time on loan, <laughs> a lot of time on loan, actually. Look, he's had a great start. Uh, I mean, he's had a great uh, recent run at Arsenal, you know. You know, people talk about he's only won one FA Cup, which is true. And he won that FA Cup, by the way, with a team that was punching above their weight. That Arsenal team was not a team that was capable of winning that, you know, winning trophies. They were punching above the weight. Um, they were punching above the weight. Remember, that was the team with, you know, I believe that Arsenal team that played Chelsea in the FA Cup. Let's just read the starting lineup, actually. Let's read the starting lineup of the game. That was, what, 2020? Yeah, it was COVID. Um, Obama Young did score two goals that game, I remember. You know, you had Emilio Martinez playing in goal because you remember um, the incident with um, uh, Mope injuring... Um, Mope injuring... Um, Bern Leno... It was Tierney, David Luiz, Rob holding as a back three, Maitland Niles, Bayerin playing as uh, wing backs, Ceballos and Xhaka in midfield in the front three with Lacazette, Aubameyang, Aba Lacazette, and Nicolas Pepe. Like, let's be for real. And the players that he had on the bench was Socrates, Papastapopoulos, Eddie Nketiah, Said Kolasinac, Lucas, Lucas Torreira, Reese Nelson, Joe Willick, Matthew Macy, Matt Smith, and a young Bukayo Saka who actually didn't play a single minute in the final. Like, uh, you know, let's be 100% objective here and call it what it is. Um, that team are punched above their weight. And since then, they haven't had the success in terms of winning trophies in domestic cups, um, in the domestic cups, in FA Cup and the FL Cup, in which, in my opinion, I don't take the FA Cup and the FL Cup really that seriously in terms of trying to determine whether a manager is great or not because it's just really based on whether the manager wants to try or not especially early on. That's really how I see those sort of domestic things. The thing I will be critical of in um, uh, Arteta's time is his run in Europe has been horrendous. You know, his run in Europe has been horrendous. Um, we go this year's season. It took them, you know, this is a team that finished with, 
This is a team that finished 89 points in the Premier League, 28 wins and 5 draws, 5 losses. In 2024, they only lost one game, um, one game in the Premier League. This is a team that, you know, had played that great of a season in the Premier League, but it took them penalties to get slightly past Porto and then against one of the worst Bayern Munich teams that we've seen over the past five, six years or so. Maybe going back even longer, they got knocked out by them in the quarterfinals. And then it gets even worse from there. And, you know, when you look at the Europa League ties, um, you know, getting eliminated by, you know, I believe it was Sporting, Sporting or Benfica or something. Something out of that, uh, a, Portuguese, a Portuguese league team. There was, a, you know, they got elimp- el- eliminated by Villarreal. That was a really bad one by Olympiacos. You know, they've, they've, they've been, you know, he's been horrendous. His European record has been horrendous. But what he's been able to do in Premier League, look, last season, they finished with 89 points. Look, you know, if we're looking at this pre-Manchester City years, that's a Premier League title team. 89 points is a ridiculous feat. You know, that's a really, really good, you know, season. That's the highest point title season that Arsenal has ever had. You know, the, the facts is the facts. You know, that's a Premier League title team that he managed. They just couldn't win the, you know, Premier League because we're in an era of just pure dominance from Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. That's just the era that we find ourselves in. So, of course, Arteta deserves his extension or not. And I'm not one of those that say he's only won one trophy because of what he's been able to do with this Arsenal teams and the steady progression that they've had. But, um... But their, you know, their record in Europe has been abysmal. That is the biggest criticism that I would have with Mikel Arteta. And Arteta, and also by the way, Mikel Arteta, you know, sort of revived how he's been able to revive his Arsenal careers. There was some serious low moments, man. There was some serious low moments. Um, you know, we know that Villarreal game. That Villarreal game. We were all, you know, a, uh, we were a lot of us were expecting a lot of Arsenal fans wanted him out after that Villarreal Europa League tie. He survived that season, and then he went on to survive. You know, you know, you know that season that they started off really poorly, where they lost to, I believe. So they opened up the season. Uh, let's, let's, they opened up the season, lost to Brentford, I believe, two 0 Brentford team that was newly promoted, and then they went to Stamford Bridge, and they got slapped by Chelsea in Lukaku's first game. I believe Lukaku did actually score. I think they only lost that game 2-0, but they were proper battered in that game. And then and then they went to the Etihad, and I think they lost. I, I think that game got bad. Yeah, they lost 5-0. That was the game that Jacka got sent off. 35th minute, they, got, they lost 5-0 in that game. And, you know, I'm really surprised. And they got, by the way, they got dominated in that game. They had 20, you know, City had 25 shots to 1 for Arsenal. 10 shots on target for City for none. Arsenal had 19% possession in that game. 19. I was thinking, wow, like, you know, the Arteta is done beyond done here. Somehow he managed to survive that. Survive that. And I believe that campaign actually was the sort was the first campaign that we saw some good signs later on that season. We saw some good signs from Arsenal um in that season. I think that was the, no, that was not that season actually. Was it that season? Let me let me pull it up. Um that that happened August, so that was the 2021-2022 season. Yeah, that was the season that we started seeing a little bit good sign. They had that really really bad run. That um, and then I believe later on they had that poor performance as well. The Damari the Gray game at Everton, in which you know the pressure started mount even even more, and somehow we survived that. And then they showed us some signs. They showed us some signs, and I would have to say, you know, the in my opinion, the table turning in terms of Mikel Arteta and his managerial sort of career at Arsenal was that game, that game at the Emirates that they played, um, City took on Arsenal, that game at the, uh, not the Emirates, yeah, at the Emirates Stadium, um, it was, it took a late goal from Rodri to win the game, um, for City, actually, Arsenal, they ended up taking the lead early through Bukayo Saka in the 31st minute, 
Riyad Mahrez, and then they dominated that first half. They played some really, really good football. They created a lot of numerous opportunities. They played really appealing football against Manchester City. And it was the first time we saw Manchester City really get outplayed. And Manchester City struggled to play out. And they were suffocating, especially in that first 55 minutes or so. Then Arsenal conceded a penalty. Mahrez lashes at home in the 57th minute. And then it was a very controversial sort of red card from Magalese, which allows City to finally regain some control. They eventually control, start controlling the game a little bit more. And then they get that late, late win through Rodri. Rodri gets the winner in the 93rd minute. Um, but if you, you know, if, you know, I came out of that game saying, wow, Arsenal are actually a good team. And I never saw a team do that to Manchester City. And that, in my opinion, was probably the turning moment in Mikel Arteta's reign as Arsenal manager. And yeah, that was a, that was a really, really fun game, actually. That was a game that was actually played in my time, local 6 It was with uh, my friend on Discord, and we were up all night. It was about like 3, 4, and we were like, okay, why don't we just watch the game together? Might as well. The game's at 6.30 at City Arsenal, and I actually streamed the game on my Discord, and we actually ended up watching the game together, and it was a really, it was a really, really fun game to watch, and and, um, and yeah, in my opinion, that was the turning point for Mikel Arteta at um, City. And um, yeah, and then now there is the injuries that he has to face currently. Wow, we went, we talked, discussed about Arteta. We didn't even get to, you know, a lot of injuries that he's having to face with, you know, with Martin Odegaard. We know that um, Mikel Moreno, who just came in, he suffered a shoulder injury. Now he has Martin Odegaard, who will not be playing against Tottenham. And then in Declan Rice with yellow card suspension. This probably will lead Kai Havertz dropping in more of an A role, and um, and then and then um, Gabriel Jesus coming in. So you know, I am very interested to see how Mikel Arteta tries to be tactical, flexible, tactically flexible with um, Arsenal with the issues that they're facing, and if they're able to maintain um, their Premier League title, you know, push um, despite what because they, they've already dropped points, and despite you know what they've suffered recently.